Hey there, in this short video, we're gonna talk about a backboard. What is it and why do you need one? And also some of the important things to know before you put a backboard on the wall. Okay, so what is a backboard? Well, a backboard is the name they give to the surface or centralized point for telecommunications equipment and wiring distribution. It's typically plywood, although it doesn't have to be. And what it really is, is it's the centralized location, usually on a wall, usually in some kind of a secure room, but not always, could be just a closet, depending on the size of, size of the organization. It is the place where all the wiring from the different station points come back to one central location. So for instance, you might have 66 blocks on a backboard. This is the wiring that goes from the 66 block out to the phones or uh, other devices that need to connect to it, like fax machines. Generally speaking about voice type things. Now, in smaller environments, you may actually even have your data patch panel on your backboard. And typically, in, in most of your medium and larger size data environments, you've got a, you know, a separate data rack just for these things. But in some small offices, you might have your data patch panel there. Also, what often, often goes on a backboard is your PBX. So typical voice type backboard is going to have a PBX followed by a 66 block and then the wiring that goes from the PBX to the 66 block and then the wires go from the 66 block out to the stations where the phones go. All right, here's what's important for you to know. This is a two foot by two foot plywood backboard and it is three quarter inches in um, thickness. And I recommend that, not too much thinner. You could get away with half inch, but it doesn't work as well. Um, for those of you who don't use the US measuring, um, I would say that's probably about maybe 14, 15 uh, millimeters in thickness. And when you mount a backboard, here's the things you need to consider. One is, is that it needs to be up high enough so that it's reachable you know, to all extents of the backboard, but high enough so that it stays away from things like potential flooding or even things near the ground that might expose it to, you know, impact. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of times the place where the, the, the backboard is is also the place where they store mops and brooms and Christmas decorations. So just take that in consideration. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is the wall that it goes on should be a wall that is not subject to uh, a lot of vibration. So for instance, if, if there's a door on the other side of the wall that's constantly slamming and it's, it's making the wall vibrate, that's not a good candidate. The other thing that needs to be considered is the, the room in which it is the backboard is gonna be mounted should be uh, protected from the elements, particularly humidity and temperature. Ideally, you want your, your, your equipment to be in a room that's somewhere around 70 or less degrees, but, but not cold either. Um, and then also, when you mount your backboard, two things to consider. Um, you need to have somewhere where you can get power. So ideally, you want to mount it so that it's with, you know, there's an outlet somewhere nearby you know, for electricity. The other thing is that you're going to be attaching to the studs in the walls behind. So what you're going to do is you're going to use sheetrock screws um, that are at least two inches in, uh, in length and they're gonna go through the plywood, through the sheetrock, and into the studs. So for those of you who are not familiar with what I'm talking about, studs are either, um, they're either sheet metal or wooden uh, beams that go from the floor to the ceiling, and they're inside the wall. It's what the sheetrock attaches to, it's what the wall attaches to. They generally start in the corner, and then they're about every 16 inches after that. If you're not sure where they are, you can use what's called a stud finder to locate them. Anyway, so you, which, because here's what you want. You want a good solid connection, you know, through your plywood and into the studs behind the wall. Because if you don't, if you just try to attach to the sheetrock, what will happen is your, your, the, the weight of the equipment will just make it just fall off. Because sheetrock is, is kind of a porous, powdery substance uh, behind the paint. So it doesn't, it doesn't hold things very well. You might be wondering why do I even need a backboard? Why can't I put things just directly on the wall? Well, that's the reason. This was sheetrock walls do not make a very good uh, surface for mounting your equipment. It's just not professional either. Now, if you really want to be cool and you've got the time, painting your backboard is nice too. So if you have the time to, and a lot of times in commercial installations, you don't have the time, but if you did, painting your backboard with a white acrylic paint and letting it dry for a day before you mount equipment on it is kind of nice. It just looks better and it protects the, the plywood from from oxidation and from and from moisture. 
All right, so that's my spiel on backboards. Any of you have something else to add, please leave it in the comments, and I uh, hope that makes you a little wiser for your next installation. Thanks so much for watching.